So we come to the other important factor, the velocity or speed of a wind. We measure the speed in miles per hour, and your common sense is enough to tell you that a 10 mile wind will have twice as much effect on a bullet as a five mile wind from the same direction. But how are you going to figure out a wind speed? Well, the best thing to have is plenty of experience. An old timer can just look at a wind and feel it on his face and give you a close estimate of its speed. But not many of you have the experience it takes. So you'll just have to figure it out. You can get some help by using your eyes. Watch what the wind does to grass or trees or dust or smoke or anything else it's blowing. At first, that won't tell you much about the wind speed in miles per hour. But you'll be surprised how soon you'll get the feel of it. In the meantime, there are a couple of simple rules that you can use. Here's one. Take something light, like dust or a blade of grass. Toss it into the air and watch where it falls. Point with your whole arm from the shoulder at that spot. Then estimate the angle between your arm and your body. Most of you know that a right angle is 90 degrees. When you hold your arm out straight then, the angle between your arm and your body is 90 degrees. All right, I'm pointing at the spot where the grass fell. My arm is a little less than halfway up, so I'll say the angle under it is 40 degrees. Got that? If this is a 90 degree angle, this is a 40. Now then, the rule is that you divide the angle under your arm by four to get the speed of the wind in miles per hour. Don't ask me why. Somebody made it up before my time and didn't tell me why. But I know it's near enough right to work. One quarter of the angle between your arm and your body gives you the speed of the wind. All right, if this is a 40 degree angle, what's the speed of the wind? Lewis? Four into 40 is 10, sir. 10 miles per hour. Right. The angle between your arm and your body divided by four is the wind velocity in miles per hour. If my blade of grass fell there, what's the wind speed? Carol? That's a little more than halfway up, sir. About 60 degrees. Right. 60 degrees? What's the speed of the wind? 4 into 60 is uh, 15, 15 miles an hour. Okay. Remember that. One quarter of the angle between the arm and the body. There's another rule of thumb. Or really, it's the same rule applied in a different way. You take the whole angle between your body and your arm when it's straight out and divide it into five equal parts. Then each of these parts represents a wind speed of five miles per hour. You see what I mean? You toss your dust or your blade of grass or whatever it is, just as you did before, and point to the spot where it falls. Then you work it out this way. Five miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, 15 miles per hour. Questions? Of course, you won't always have to work the wind out for yourself. This man's army believes in cooperation. If somebody knows the wind speed already, ask him. On the range, ask the man ahead of you. In battle, ask the next man down the line. And if anybody asks you, tell him. Only, don't tell him unless you know what you're talking about. Well, now you know how to designate wind direction and how to figure wind speed. You're able to get the information you need to set your sights for the effect of the wind. How are you going to turn this information into clicks of your windage knob? One way is to refer to windage diagrams in your scorebook. These charts work out the corrections for you and will be explained in detail by your platoon leaders. But you don't take your scorebooks into battle. 
in a scrap, you estimate your wind, do the figuring in your head, and set your sights, but quick. So learn how to do it now, while you've still got time to think about it, and get your questions answered. Ready? Hold on to your hat. Here we go. Here's the one-click windage rule. Range in hundreds of yards times wind velocity in miles per hour divided by 10 equals the number of clicks of wind allowance you've got to take for three and nine o'clock winds. Now don't let that scare you. It's not as tough as it sounds. For instance, when it says the range in hundreds of yards, all it means is that you throw the two zeros away. When your range is 300, you'll call it a three. 500, a five. 200, a two, and so on. The wind in miles per hour is what we've just been talking about. It'll turn out to be some perfectly harmless number like eight, or 12, or 18, or 20. So relax. That whole business, the range in hundreds of yards times the velocity of the wind in miles per hour is going to turn out to be easier than the arithmetic you did in school when you were 10 years old. It'll be about as hard as multiplying three times 15. You know your range. Say it's 500 yards. Well, that's five. Your wind's from three o'clock. You estimated speed, say eight miles an hour. So you've got to multiply five times eight. It's as tough as that. Five times eight is 40. And that's the first half of this problem. Now, we've got to divide by 10. If you've ever been exposed to simple decimals, you know how hard that is. You point off one place from the right. If the last digit happens to be a zero, just chuck it away. And there's your problem. You multiplied five for 500 yards times eight for eight miles per hour. And you got 40. Now, we have to divide by 10. In other words, we have to knock off that last zero. And the answer was four. So four is the number of clicks of wind allowance you must take. Now, we've been talking about three and nine o'clock winds. Think of your clock again. Three and nine o'clock winds hit the bullet directly from the side. What about two, four, eight, and 10 o'clock winds? That is, the winds within one hour on each side of three and nine o'clock. These winds are not directly from one side or the other, but they're so close you don't bother about the differences. In other words, the rule holds for all winds that are generally from the side. You make no allowance at all for six and 12 o'clock winds because they do not blow the bullet out of line. So what winds does that leave us? It leaves one and five and seven and 11 o'clock winds, which are two hours away from three and nine o'clock. They strike the bullet only a glancing blow and affect it only about half as much. So for them, you take half as many clicks of windage.